Flowing door in Ellen Bell's Otan. I'd like to invite you to imagine something. It doesn't matter whether or not the reality such as it is now lines up with what I'm about to say because I know it does not. And it doesn't matter whether or not you or I think it's possible, although I'm convinced that it is possible. I'm inviting you to imagine what I'm about to say and to ask yourself in your hearts if this would be something that you would want to be. What would our society look like if it were really Jewish, if it were really Israel? Well, it would not be a monarchy. Shmuel Hanavi, the, the prophet uh, Shmuel, I'm not going to use your mispronunciations, I'm sorry. Was broken hearted when the Jewish people asked for a king like every other people. And turned to Hashem with a broken heart and, and Hashem's answer to him was it's not you who they rejected it's me so I'm asking myself what is the society For those who don't reject Hashem. What is the society that Shmuel wanted, that the other prophets wanted, that our judges and our elders and Moshe Rabbeinu, our teacher Moshe, what do they want? Although as kings go, David was not a bad one, <laughs> and in many ways he's exemplar because he was someone who had some very negative characteristics, and he fought himself to overcome them all through his life. I don't know whether or not you know this, but everything that David HaMelech wrote, he wrote in the last year of his life. It took him that long to be able to formulate what he wanted to say. The Hebrew word melech is translated as king, but it really doesn't mean king at all. It's not a monarch. It uh, comes from the same root as uh, to, to, to walk and halacha, which is the Jewish way of life, and it means a guide, it means the way in which one walks through the world and guides others. That is the true meaning of melech, not a, not a, uh, a monarch. David is as well known, his name is equal to both Ohev, which means to love, and Ahuv, which is beloved. So we know that the one who guides us has to be someone who both loves us and is loved. But what you don't know is that his name is also equal to the word Hagev, which means the body, 
and Malchut David, which is the kingdom of David translated, but it actually means the way of walking like David. Those who walk in that way mean those who are sovereign in their corporate bodies. And the Hebrew word Malchut, which is translated as kingdom, is identical to the Hebrew word Malchot, Malachot, more correctly, which means the queens. The kingdom of the king is the queens. So that would be the real meaning of a Hebrew monarchy. But even that wasn't what God had in mind. And even that is not what the prophet Shmuel really wanted. What did they want? They wanted what Moshe Rabbeinu wanted. They wanted what our teacher Moshe asked Hashem for. When Moshe said to Hashem, I can't carry this whole people by myself. I need help with this responsibility. And the way in which Hashem answered him when he said to him, to choose elders, wise people who would have various levels of the number of people that would turn to them. That is our way of government. Hashoftim, the judges, the way in which it's translated, you really cannot see how great they were. First of all, an anagram of Shufet, which is translated as judge, is Pashut, which means someone who's very simple. They knew Torah inside and out, but they were very simple. And they were very close to the people. And their job was not to punish. It was to, to heal. Because they knew that if someone had done something wrong, that that person's the psyche was sick, that they had to be healed. And so the, the judges were the doctors of the, of the psyche. And many of the judges reached the level of, of Nevoa, of prophecy. And we know from Moshe's conversation with Yoshua that Moshe wanted all of Israel to reach the level of prophecy. He didn't want to have that singular knowledge. He wanted it for all. And he said to Yoshua, are you jealous for me? No one who's a true leader in Israel wants to be the head of a pyramid of a hierarchy. They want it for everyone. And they don't want it to be alone in having the responsibility. They want to share it. And so if this were really Israel, it would not be a monarchy. And the true meaning of Hamishichim, of the Messiahs, are, is not the anointing. It's not 
a ceremony with oil. It's those who have understood the Book of Kings correctly. And are fit to be guides. Shemin, Mel Shemin is the oil, it's the Book of Kings. Sefer Malachim is the Shemin. And only those who understand that book are fit to be the guides in Israel. When I came here, I thought that the government here had the same vision and they, they were working toward that. I understood that there would have to be a transition because we had to adapt Jewish law to modern times. But keeping the moral spirit of Jewish law while adapting it to modern society was what I thought that this country would be about. I was very mistaken. The judges here are nothing like my ancient memories of the judges. And the government here, they pretend to be Jewish, they pretend to have the Jewish people's interest at heart. They don't. And I cannot compromise vision of what Israel is supposed to be. I cannot. I cannot bend to reality. And everything in this country is meant to demoralize the Jews, to except real politic and an army. <laughs> Do you know that 80% and some say up to 90% of the Palestinians are genetically Jewish? That they were forced to convert to Islam a few years ago, that according to not only anthropological studies, but genetic studies that were carried out by the Hebrew University, the Palestinians. It's ridiculous to call them that. Have the same percentage of those who carry the, the Kohen gene as the Ashkenazi Jews do. state of Israel does nothing to bring them home. And many of them know that they're Jewish. And many of them practice Jewish practices secretly to great danger to themselves. And my question is, why is nobody trying to bring them back home? So there would be no Palestinian problem if this were really Israel. They would be brought home. The Hebrew root, Pei Lamed Shein, or Pei Lamed Sien, which is the root of Palestinian, exists in all of the Semitic languages, including uh, 
including in Arabic. And in all of the Semitic languages, it means an invader, one who breaks through. Palestinian people couldn't possibly be really calling themselves that because they know what the meaning of the word is. Somebody is forcing them to say that they're Palestinians. In fact, they're, they're Jews who are forcibly converted to Islam. And then you have to ask yourselves why the government is having Jewish Jews wage war on Muslim Jews. The government knows what I'm saying. They've known it since Ben-Gurion's time. State of Israel wouldn't be a state at all. It would be the society of Israel. It would just be Israel. Would accept here as residents all of the Gentiles who are willing to live in peace, who are willing to put away idol worship from themselves and accept the one God, the one God, the true one God, real monotheism. There is no duality in real monotheism. It's knowing that God is both good and bad, as the prophet Yeshayahu teaches, and wanting to strengthen the good side. To build a society that is guided by elders who have reached the level of prophecy or very close to it. Prophecy is not fortune telling. It's not seeing the future in the sense of the future having already been determined and they see it. It is having the power to create the future. It is having a vision so high and having a love so comprehensive that it takes in all of the generations. And so they bless all of the generations with the very, very highest blessings. And in that way, they create the future. Those kinds of elders. And what would the economy of the real Israel be? First of all, we would have our, 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 uh, no, our um, sabbatical years. And um, we would have the Jubilees. They would be in force. There would be no lending on interest. That's completely forbidden. It would actually be a real communist society not communist the way you think, it would be the communism that the prophets and their students lived according to. We learn that the prophets and who were called uh, Nevi'im and their students, the B'nai Nevi'im, ate out of a common pot. Ha'isi'im, uh, the Dead Sea sect, lived communally. But in order to be able to live that way, one genuinely, genuinely has to be guided by the principle of Ve'ahavta l'reyecha kamocha. You will love your fellow as you love yourself. Communism only works with people who've reached that level. And Israel are intended to reach that level. Rabbi Akiva said, Shalishalach is a very comprehensive 
principle in Torah, it means what is mine is yours. That lilach is also melech, is also the word that's translated as monarch, but isn't a monarch at all, it's a guide. But the mem in melech is li, and then lach is to you, as to me, so to you. That would be the guiding principle if this were, if this were Israel. And the reason why I wanted to tell you all this is to have you ask yourself if this is something that you would want to see in the world. The real Israel. People say that Israel want to conquer the entire world. It's not a question of conquering. The real Israel want this for the whole world. But the question is, do you want this for yourselves? What do you feel in your hearts? What do you see in your minds? When I tell you that this is what Israel is meant to be, that this is the common vision of all of those who have really loved Hashem in all of our generations. From the time of Avraham and Sarah until now, and it will be the vision of all of our descendants who will be born, and those who will grow, who are already born, but they're young, who are really, really devoted to Hashem. I wanted to to induct you, if you want to be inducted into this vision, because that is the vision of what's called Svaot Hashem, the armies of God, or the armies that want peace. Real army of Hashem has nothing to do with making war has everything to do with making peace. Not just talking about peace and then asking for a military budget. Making people believe that they can bring peace about. To want that to light the fire in somebody's heart and somebody's soul, to dedicate their life to the vision of Israel, the real vision of Israel, the real vision of the God of Israel, higher even than that of, of King David. We're not meant to be a monarchy. We're meant to be guided by wise, elders who are themselves on the level of prophecy are very close to it. People who are loved and love and have the welfare of every generation at heart and if there is a dispute that they settle it in love for everybody and ask themselves what does, how does my decision impact not only on these people's lives, but on their children's and their grandchildren, and would their ancestors be at peace knowing that I was ruling such as I am? 
Those are the kinds of questions that a real judge asks. I wanted to share this with you so that you know what Israel is really, really about. And hopefully some of you will understand and want it for the whole world. Thank you for listening.